Um, just like when you're watering your plant, you want even water penetration. So then now I know I've got everything in there. And now once that's done, you put your lid back on and you allow it to sit. And I'll actually read out here. It says to, uh, to allow it to sit 24 to 74 hours before extraction. And uh, yeah, we'll bring the camera over and we're actually going to show you where, uh, where it's going to fit in and stuff. And, uh, and of course, then uh, I'm going to start filling up. The closing out segment will be me filling it up because I have to use a reverse osmosis machine. Anybody who's had to use that before and do five gallons understands you have to stand there for a little while. So uh, we, we were trying to seal this up. So it's a fabulous, uh, a fabulous thing. We're going to take this particular cartridge. It'll be sitting in a different area at room temperature upstairs. And uh, this here, another good thing about the extractor is that usually you just put a, a thermostat in there or a, a heater, uh, a, a water heater. And uh, they're relatively cheap. You can pick them up at uh, basically a fish or a, or a, hardware, or a hydroponic store to uh, keep the temperature uh, optimal. And uh, I believe the optimal running temperature is 73. Um, I don't have it exactly here in my notes. Um, if people were wondering about what's actually in this, there's five different uh, bacterial and fungi foods from the most premium sources available and added to supply adequate foods for the feeding frenzy for what's in that part. Uh, food grade, unsulfured, certified, organic, dehydrated molasses is the sixth bacterial food placed in the frenzy. Now the frenzy is of course the one we haven't added yet. What we this is the one that we're gonna add later. We're gonna put that in there once it's uh, well tomorrow, 24 hours from now. We'll uh, we'll add it to the extractor, and uh, and you just kind of splash it in there with your water and uh, add your cartridge, which we'll show. So um, the other thing that's interesting about this is that vermin tea is also made with Alaskan humus, ermis or earthworm castings fossilized kelp, fungi spores, fungi cultures, and other proprietary uh, ingredients. So a very advanced uh, project, a very advanced food, if you have it. They call it an additive, um, I, I, and it is an additive. Um, it's not a base, it's certainly an additive. Uh, but uh, a fabulous one at that. And um, yeah, what's also interesting is, is the Alaskan humus, if you actually go and research it on the internet, comes from underneath an iceberg. So it's not exactly the easiest soil to ascertain. Um, you have to dig down low and you have to be able to get it. So it's very interesting soil. Apparently it's water retention ability is 10 times or 20 times. or I can't remember what my research was picking up on it. But uh, I found it a very interesting product because it's one of the few things that um, you know, uh, we're seeing pop up a lot more and more um, over top of your, your historic uh, or your traditional humic acid and stuff like that to, to, to handle that sort of stuff. Um, so yeah, that basically covers what I'm going to cover in part one. Part two of the video, and we're going to show you the inside of the machine here, but part two of the video will be the actual tea. It'll be the, uh, the actual brew. And we're going to talk a little bit about that. And, uh, you know, you got to remember, we're talking about microbes and, you know, the beneficial microbes and uh, unbeneficial microbes at the same time. We have to remember there's microbes that eat other microbes, you know, that still produce good food. I know one other thing that I found interesting about my research in, verm in vermicrop is that they actually take the time to feed their worms food out of um, nothing but healthy um, biodegradable um, byproduct making your worm castings uh, and your tea, of course, a lot more um, organic if you have it. Um, but there's certainly no way that uh, uh, any chemicals or anything are getting in there. So uh, I found that to be very interesting because they specially feed these worms specifically for their product. And uh, that's where their consistency comes in. And, uh, and uh, I found it to be a very consistent pro product as long as you follow the instructions. Um, uh, it is cutting edge science. It's, it, to me, it's, uh, it's where we're headed um, in, in, in microbial research um, as well as all the other, um, I mean, like I said, uh, the glacier stuff, that, that really uh, shocked me because, you know, I'm trying to think, wow, to get under a glacier is not too easy. So, um, again, again, this is just all my personal research and, uh, and what I've been able to ascertain. So, uh, we're going to bring the camera over a little closer here and show you the inside. And uh, and then we'll go from there. Um, I don't think I really.
my camera lady really needs to move. I think she'll be able to see what I want to show you. Yeah. Because really what I want to show you, there's a plug here. And this just plugs into the wall. This is your machine that runs. And right here is a cartridge. Now you can see there's a line 10 here. And there's a line 5 down here for the 5 cartridge, 5 gallon cartridge. So of course, that, these are your fill lines. So just like any res, you would fill it up. So in closing, this is Jason Wilcox signing out. I got to fill, uh, fill my tank here. And in 24 hours, we're going to film part 2 and bring it to you. And, uh, and that will be the end of the brew. But Verma Tea, Verma Crop, way to go. Um, Verma Crop's come out with this product, and, uh, and, and, and uh, I'm just stoked. It's a, it's a fabulous, um, fabulous uh, uh, product to have at your disposal in, this, in the context that I'm able to come down here, brew it, put it in my fridge, and uh, be able to treat my plants without having to worry about driving anywhere or, or relying on anybody else to have fresh stock because sometimes people are sold out. So uh, 101 reasons to get your own machine, and uh, we hope to prove some of the success on, uh, oh, we don't hope to, we will prove some of the success uh, in future videos with, uh, with, our, with our vermity. So I'm just going to turn on my uh, reverse osmosis and let this start filling up here. First thing you do, just to uh, point, just see some of you uh, viewers don't know, if you do have a reverse osmosis machine, you want to clear your pump. You get some sediment that lands at the bottom there, it becomes dark. You just want to run it for a couple of minutes and let that stuff get out of there before you uh, fill up your res. It's something I'm just learning as well. Um, a lot of these machines are new to me. And then of course you can just go ahead and fill your res. So anyway, this is Jason Wilcox and we'll see you in part two where we got Vermicrop, the brew. See you then.